when we're starting this chat or this lesson, we're talking about um, what fossils can tell us, and the us is what they can tell people today. We know that fossils happened from many, many years ago, and they tell us of evidence of ecosystem and plant and animal life of many years. A paleontologist is a scientist who studies fossils, but not just dinosaurs. They could be studying ecosystems, they could be studying um, plant life, food webs, uh, food chains, and how everything is interrelated. So on page 206, you're gonna see a yellow banner. Does everybody see that yellow banner on page 206? Yeah. It looks like caution tape. And it's yellow and black and it says misconception. What does the prefix miss mean when I add it to a word? What does the prefix miss mean when I add it to a word? JJ? Like something's not really right. Okay, something that's not really right. Like if you miss something, you don't do it right, right? I misspelled a word. I didn't spell it correctly. Can anybody think of another time that we've used the word miss in a word? Yes. Mistake. A mistake. You don't do something right. Where is another miss used in a word? Missed. Okay, missed. <laughs> not, but in the word missed, it doesn't mean something mean incorrect. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for the prefix added to another word. Yes. Misunderstood. Misunderstood, very good. That's an excellent one. Misunderstood, to understand something or to misunderstand something. Um, could you say I misread that? I misread the directions and I didn't do it correctly. What's another time you've heard it? Misinterpret. Misinterpret. That's excellent. Very good. So misinterpret would to not understand something when you said it. So I misinterpreted. So on the page here it says misconception. Who thinks they can tell me what misconception means? What is misconception? What do you think, Chris? Like they lead you to very good. You were led to believe something, but the answer is actually something else. So that's what a misconception is. Excellent description of that, Chris. Yes. Magic trick that you like get your attention like on something else, and then they know what to say. Ah, very good. So sometimes people mislead you, and they get your attention off of something to turn it to something else. So there's a lot of misconceptions when we talk about dinosaurs. When we talk about the word misconception, Natalie, sit up, please. We talk about being misunderstood or not understood. We don't understand something about them. So dinosaurs were a group of reptiles that lived on Earth for about 150 mil million years ago. We're on page 206. Is everybody with me? All right, so we're not playing with our markers. We're just following along. You know, 150 years. 206, about 150 million years ago. That period has been called the age of dinosaurs. A common misconception is that all of the large reptiles alive at that time were dinosaurs. But in fact, Earth was home to many other kinds of reptiles during the age of dinosaurs. So we think the misconception is that only dinosaurs were allowed, alive, but other animals were alive at the same time, other reptiles. So let's highlight that misconception. Everybody find the spot in our books where it says a common misconception is that all of the large reptiles, we're highlighting this in our books, a common misconception is that all of the large reptiles alive at that time were dinosaurs. In fact, Earth was home to many other kinds of reptiles during the age of dinosaurs. So we might even have some reptiles that are alive today that were alive then. Yes? Um, well, it depends on the type of dinosaur. So in this particular group of dinosaurs we're talking about goes back to 150, 165, could be any of those. Sometimes when they say that about, that word about means it's an estimation, just like we've been learning in math. About means an estimate. Yes? Um, you misunderstood. You said Earth for about 150 oh, million yes. years. Yes. They were on Earth for about 150 about million years. Hundred, about 150 years. Mistake. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Does everybody highlight that, those two sentences? All right, I'm gonna read those two sentences again. A common misconception is that all of the large reptiles alive at the time were dinosaurs. In fact, Earth was home to many other kinds of reptiles during the age of dinosaurs. 
So it's just those two sentences. Honey, you're on the wrong page. That's why you're not highlighting. We're on that page. There you go. First paragraph, uh, fourth sentence down. A common misconception. Count down one, two, three. Start with the four. Pterosaurs, for example, were a group of flying reptiles. They did not have feathers, but flew on wings made of skin. The largest pterosaur had wings measuring more than 30 feet from tip to tip. That's about the length of our classroom. So if you think that's how big its wingspan was from tip to tip. So it was massive. Imagine that flying in the air today. That would be quite large. It would be quick. Okay, we're not talking out. Okay. Not talking out. It would be very big. Jackson. But I was thinking when I was talking about um, if that's the kind of pterodactyl that I was talking about, um, it was frozen in the ice caps in Canada. Interesting. And it was, it was the size of a small red pig. Interesting. Cool. Okay, let's keep looking. Pterosaurs and dinosaurs share a common ancestor, so they have some type of relative. But scientists have used fossils to identify important differences between the two. Dinosaurs, for example, had a different hip structure than the pterosaur. Like dinosaurs, pterosaurs became extinct about 65 million years ago. So on the bottom it says, write one way in which dinosaurs and pterosaurs were alike, and which way is one way they are different. Who can tell me one way they are alike? How are they alike? Alexis? <laughs> what way they are alike? Vincent? Some of them both lived in the Cretaceous period. Okay, well, it's not what we just, we're just looking at our reading. We're not relying on prior knowledge to answer this question. Right now, they want you to go back to that paragraph and look for the answer. Chris? Um, they're, they're both alive in the, um, they, like, they are both alive in the same time period. They are both, Natalie? They are both dinosaurs. They are both dinosaurs. They are both related to their ancestors. Are I know, I know, I know. Yes, reptiles. They were both related to reptiles. Oh, you mean pterosaurs? Yes, they were both related to the pterosaurs. Yes. There's two. There's reptiles and birds. Okay. They're potentially birds. Now let's take a look at this picture here. Does everybody look at their picture? What do you notice that's different between a bird and the pterosaur? What does a pterosaur have on the end of its wings that a bird does not? What does a pterosaur have on the end of its wings that a bird does not? JJ? Wings. It has what? Like little claws. Little claws or little hands. What other animal do you know that has kind of like hand-like structure on the end of their wings? So you know it's a flying animal. I don't think birds do, because I have chickens in my backyard and they don't have hands on the end of their wings. Vince, Vance, bats, very good. And so they know that pterosaur's wings are similar to bat wings and that they, they have long pieces of skin that are supported by a hand at the end, which meant allows them to fly. So, what type of animal is a bat? What type of animal classified? If we were classified bat, what type of animal is it? It is a? It's a mammal. It's a mammal. So hmm, some dinosaurs are related to mammals. Some are related to reptiles. So interesting facts. All right, turn in our books to page 207. Look in your books on page 207. Your highlighters are ready because we're going to highlight a few things. Scientists study fossils to learn about plants, animals, and the environments of the past. A scientist who studies fossils is called a paleontologist. We're on page 207 and we're going to highlight that sentence. A scientist who studies fossils is called a paleontologist. Some fossils show us that extinct organisms look like and how they live. For example, paleontologists have found skulls from a dinosaur called a sauropod. A sauropod were a group of dinosaurs that had small heads, long necks, and enormous bodies. They ate plants and may have used their long necks to reach tall trees. 
Do you have something you wanted to add? Yes. You know, the longest dinosaur to ever live is the Archosmosaurus. It was 110 feet long. Wow, that is super that long. Really yes. Super long. And it weighed about the weight of five elephants. Wow. All right, let's continue. Because of their size, these dinosaurs needed huge amounts of food. However, their small heads meant that they could only take small bites. How did they get enough to eat? Paleontologists studies the dinosaur skulls and the shape of their teeth. They concluded that some sauropods may have swallowed their food without chewing it. Doing this allowed the dinosaurs to get food to their stomachs more quickly and take more bites. This reminds me of what ocean animal that eats really small oh. ocean uh, animals called krill. Oh, whale. Whale. How dare you? Whale. Why are we yelling out? Whales are one of the largest mammals on earth, and they eat the smallest animal in the ocean because they leave their mouth open and it filters through and it kind of catches things kind of like a net. It just filters them through their mouth. Through yes. Them. But also like in a group of like uh, animals that are called subspecies. I, I didn't hear you. There, there are a group of like a type of animal which are called subspecies. Filter feeders, yes. And so think about the large, this reminds me of the largest animal eating a small animal. Now this doesn't eat another animal, it's just a uh, herbivore, and it eats just plants. It's a consumer, but it eats herbivores. And what do we know about the shape of its teeth? The scientists in here notice something about the shape of its teeth. Do you think the sauropod had sharp teeth if it had to eat leaves? No, what do you think its teeth looked like? What do you think? Yes. Uh, the uh, sauropod's teeth are really flat, Okay, because, they were flat because what? Because for it to be able to eat plants, to be able to crush the plants, and for it to be able to swallow. Yes, crush the plants and to be able to grind the plant. How many of you, um, all right, right now I want you to take your tongue in your mouth, and I want you to feel your teeth. Okay, feel your back teeth. Everybody feel your back teeth? Mm -hmm. What do you notice about your back teeth? That they're molars. Okay, well then we know flat. that's what they're called, but what do you notice about the shape of them? They're flat. Raising our hand. Yes, Bella. They're square and flat. They're kind of square. They're kind of flat. They're not very sharp, right? What do you notice about your very front teeth, like on the ends? They're like your vampire teeth. They're called canines. What do you notice about those? They're sharp. They're sharp. So if you eat a piece of bread or you eat something and you can tear it, you can tear it pretty easily. And then you put it in the back of your mouth and you chew and it grinds your teeth down. Now look at the two dinosaurs on the page here. Look at the dinosaur skeleton on the top of page 206. Look at its teeth. Do you think that animal ate vegetables and leaves? What do you think it ate? Meat. Alexis. Meat. Meat. Other dinosaurs, right? So we know it was what type of animal? What type of consumer eats meat? Vance. What type of consumer eats meat? Starts with a C. Grayson. A carnivore. A carnivore, very good. And so a carnivore eats meat, has very sharp teeth. The sauropod, what do you think its teeth look like? They were probably herbivores. Herbivores, and they would probably had flat teeth that they would grind their teeth down. They grind the food down. Does anybody think of, how about if you had a pet cow? Anybody looked in the mouth of a pet cow yes. before? Yeah. They have very flat teeth. Yeah. Their teeth are used for grass and they grind their teeth. Okay? Alright. I have lots of hands up. Real quick. Um, uh, I have a question. What are the like uh horrifying What do they do? I think they're kind of used for like tearing things. Like when you try to bite something, you usually smile. use that. Yes. Um They have big teeth. They have, they have really big roots, and if I took a picture of it, I might be able to email it to my mom. Cool. Thanks. Yes. Um, did you know the biggest dinosaur, the Archosaurus, it couldn't swallow its food, so what it did is it ate like pebbles, and 
then it, the pimples grind in the teeth too. You know that's what um, birds do? Chickens do that. Chickens have, yeah, have a, a, eat a waddle in the top in their in chest their and they eat rocks and other things that grind their food down. A lot of animals actually do that. Yeah. Yes? I only have more, but I can't feel them. Okay. JJ. Um, so when I was little, we had um, I, ha I used to live like six feet away from the
based on their remains or the type of fossils they find, will they have they ever found one covered in skin? Not very often. I don't think they have a hadrosaurus. I know that they have a few other dinosaurs, like the one we talked about uh, earlier this week, but most we've only been able to find um, animals that are just the bones or their cast or mold model. All right, let's take a look on page 208. Let's continue. So fossils can also be um, show how plants and animals have changed over time. Many living things today are related to plants and animals of the past. Fossils show that some extinct plant species looked a lot like modern plants. For example, compare the picture of the horsetail fossil and the modern horsetail plant on the bottom of this page. Does everybody see it? Yeah. Bottom of page 208. Some horsetail plants of the past grew the size of trees. Modern horsetail plants are much smaller. This suggests that the plants changed slowly over time. So they were able to find some fossilized remains of the same plant and it looks the same, but it was gigantic and now we know it's small. So that scientists can guess or hypothesize with an educated guess what that they changed over time, that they got smaller over time. Take a look at page 209. So look at the pictures on the bottom of this page. And I wanna show you, we're gonna talk a little bit about our previous lesson in fossil fuels to get an understanding of where this picture is taken. So take a look at the picture in the circle on page 209. Oh, that's good. Did you stick something in your face? Yeah, I sticked all my pencil in my okay, eye. Okay, be careful. Wow. <laughs> oh no, oh, don't poop it. Okay, so take a look on page 209. Does everybody see the circle? Yes. What do you think that circle is? Grassland. It looks like grassland. And so if I was to look at a picture, a map of the United States, and the grassland is in the central United States. We say this, we call it the Midwest over out here, um, or in, in this area here. And so this area is a place called Kansas. This is one of the states that is there. My husband was actually stationed in the army in Kansas. And so if you look at the state of Kansas, um, maybe Iowa, uh, Missouri, Oklahoma, these are places that are very flat and have a lot of grasslands. Is there an ocean near Kansas? No. 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 Guess what they found in Kansas? No. They have found remains of animals like the ammonite on page 209 that was once an underwater animal. So they can hypothesize that that area of the United States was once covered in water. water. It wouldn't be surprising if we found shells in our yard in Florida, but it is very surprising when they found them here. They've even found full-size skeletons in, of other dinosaurs um, that are marine mammals up in the northern United States. Yes? Did you know that in Utah, um there's this raptor, and um, it has a claw like the size of a water bottle. Wow. And then what they found, and this is actually very surprising, in Utah they found a, uh, like some of a fossil of a blue whale that lived in Utah. Huh. So they know that almost all of Utah used to be covered, covered in water. Covered in water, very, very likely, yes. You know why I think that they are covered in water? Because like all the continents moved into Pangea, so that area was just left open. Did they move into Pangea, or were they originally part they of Pangea? They were originally part of Pangea, and, and they broke that, apart. That area was just open during Pangea. Absolutely. Okay, let's take a look on page 209, please. So fossils in the environment. Fossils also show that the Earth's environment has changed. On page 209, following along with our reading, for example, scientists in Kansas have found the remains of sea animals called ammonites. Ammonites are related to modern squids, but they died over 65 million years ago. In South Dakota, scientists have discovered fossils of giant sea turtles. These turtles lived about 70 million years ago, but are now extinct. What do these discoveries tell us? They show that areas of present day states, such as Kansas and South Dakota, were once covered with water. 
So looking at that picture on the bottom, you can kind of see what we can guess the bottom of the ocean looked like at that time and what it looks like now. We know that it was once covered in water. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop us now because I want to have some time for our